We've uh, we've done pretty good. We've only taken ten minutes to to roll out the uh, the um, um, the the outline of what we're going to talk about uh, today. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So, so, so going back to this, going back to this genetic selection, you know, we, we have a full lineup of hybrids that have been bred, developed, selected, tested for genetic potential to, to be high quality silage. Back in the day when Jeremy and I were doing some of this selection, if I could refer back to that mm -hmm. period of time, we kind of came up with the M MPG slogan. Yes. Milk. Production. Production. Genetics. genetics. I, I want to make sure that you... I get it. I get it. And, and we, we kind of got away from that insignia a little bit, but every what you're saying is every hybrid in the lineup that's in the master's choice bag has been selected for feeding enhanced quality. Absolutely. And, and so we talked about that testing protocol and those layers. I've put together those layers expanding on the things that were in Milk, Milk 2006. Absolutely. I mean, we have new tests yes. that, that, were, that were not even thought about back right. then, that, that we're not even looking at, that we weren't even looking at. And so now, okay, how do we incorporate, you know, seven-hour starch? Well, there, there's more parameters in seven-hour starch. Milk 2006 doesn't even take in starch digestibility. Yeah. You know, doesn't take in doesn't take in some of the other other fiber f uh, factors, fiber digestibility factors and fractions that we know of now, and so rolling all of these things into a selection process is what we have to have if we are going to have milk production genetics. And yeah. so we've called this 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 uh, system and this index, this layering process of evaluation. We've called it the MPG index. And so next year in our hybrid guide, you'll see everything will have a score, an MPG score, based on how it performed it, uh, in all of these characteristics. Now, I'm not telling everybody all the characteristics, right? Right. And, and, and it, because it is... Nor what, should you. Nor, nor should I. And, and, and even if they strap me down the chair and hook me up to uh, uh, jumper cables, you know, I'm like, nope, not doing it, you know? <laughs> But um, because it, it is the thing that, that I believe sets us apart from what everybody else is chasing. Absolutely. And, Agreed. And really in the industry, I, I'm, I, everybody in the industry that is chasing livestock and silage is chasing us. And they are not going to catch us because they do not have the testing protocol that we do to make sure that when we go on a farm, we can tell a guy, here's our full lineup that has been selected for milk production genetics, MPGs, and here is our full lineup. Let's find the best one that fits your farm. Yes. And so, so if a guy's gonna have world-class silage, he's gotta have something that was specifically developed for that. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a company in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the industry now that has a full lineup that has, uh, that has been selected for, um, uh, for feedability at all. And, and I, I may be wrong, but I, I don't I don't see that at all. Well, you you don't even have, and this is no slam. This is no slam on any labs. We I I, I really enjoy the people and and the work that they do at the labs that we mm -hmm. work at. You don't even have one lab that can perform all the work that you do that goes no. into that goes into establishing all of the parameters or the layers that no. uh, that determine the, the uh, a, a, a corn's ability or efficiency to make milk. No, you're exactly right, and and um, you you know. There, there isn't. There isn't one lab that could go run, that could go run this, the same, the same test that I look at, and um, and so all of our, all of our testing is done third party. We, we use third party labs. We, we could, um, you know, we, we could have a forge lab. If you would let me buy one, and um, <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. You get back to me, but but you know, we, we could have, we could have an internal lab, but what good is internal data? I mean, you know, as far, as far as that goes, you know, where are the checks and balances on some of that? So that's why we go to third-party labs exactly right. to get this work done so that, so that, so that you know, you know that, that guy sitting at the NIR machine that, that may someday be at the, at the Master's Choice R&D headquarters, right? That guy sitting there, he's always going to have in his mind Oh, I want to make sure that this all looks good, right? You know what I mean? And 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 always flavored and slanted. 
Whereas we send it to a third party lab, we get those test results back. There, there, there isn't any slanting there. It just, it just is what it is. But there is no one lab that I can send everything to that incorporates all of those layers that we've put together to make sure that when a guy has a, has a master's choice hybrid on his farm, it has, it has been not only, only looked at from the very beginning, but it has been tested as a hybrid to see if it has the potential for, for, for milk production. Well, if that's not complicated enough, you've got to bring Kevin and Kyle and their team into play because you've got to bring all of the agronomic testing in because, you know what, that, that master's choice hybrid actually needs to yield more than a competition as well as test better than a yeah. competition yeah. because the one thing that, that, that farmers have discovered out here for years, if you bring something to the farm that's nutritionally enhanced, a, a plant or, or try to sell seed that's nutritionally enhanced, yeah. there is always something wrong with the agronomics. Well, and that is what they have typically thought. Yeah. And that is what has historically been thought. But with Master's Choice, we're not giving up agronomics for what we're doing. And we are not giving up yield for what we are doing. You know, there are a lot of companies out there that are, that are chasing certain genetic mutants, let me, let me put it that way, that have, that have typically um, and and not just typically, but consistently had yield drag and agronomic problems. And as long as they keep chasing just genes, yeah, they're gonna they're they're losing. Yeah, okay, they're 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 losing. We're we're not we're not just chasing a gene to do this. We we are chasing a whole a whole system that that produces a hybrid. Um, that has the genetic potential to, to be able to go on a farm and make milk, and that also has the agronomics and the yield that it, that are that are going to be um, you know as good, if not better, than anything in the industry. But you, you're right, you know, we get down, we sit down with R and D, and 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 I'll I'll admit, man, I I love animal nutrition, and and I love looking at, at the nutrition of these hybrids, and man, I've seen some great things. And, and then go, to, go, to the, go with the rest of the uh, guys who work in the agronomy section, Kyle and Kevin, and they've been out looking at, at it all year long in the field, and they're like, Mark, it just it doesn't yield with anything. It just doesn't have Subject it, to stress. Subject to stress, <laughs> it just falls apart. And I'm just, oh, and so consequently, there'll be one that they choose. Uh, oh, Mark, this hybrid is the first one out of the ground. And it's big and bold and le Oh, it's so beautiful. And, and I, you know, sometimes it worries me about the way that they think about those hybrids. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, because that one might test like crap. You yeah, know? yeah. You look know look like they, the rest of the yeah, industry. Yeah, you know, they, 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 they see these and, and, um, and, and they get excited. And I have to come in and I have to say, it doesn't test. It doesn't test. It does not have the 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 ability, the potential for uh, for making milk. Now, I don't know very many other job jobs around the country where where the where the degree of success is as low as is in product <laughs> development. Yeah, you know, right, at master's right, choice. Right, 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 you know, right. uh, because these guys, you guys are out there making tens of thousands of crosses each and every year. And and we bring what maybe a couple of hybrids. We have two new hybrids in the lineup this year. Uh, yeah, two two new hybrids in the lineup this year. Tens of thousands of hand crosses and that went through the screening process yeah. to get to this place that we that we outlined as number one on the on our on our talk today that we wanted to to place emphasis on the genetics. Yeah, uh, that it starts there with those genetics. But that but that level of success, you know, two out of tens of thousands, and, and you know, that's not very that's not very high it, it's, degree it's, of success. It's not a very high degree of success. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So if a guy's going to make world class silage, the first thing he has to do is he has to have a hybrid on his farm that is bred and developed and selected for milk making potential. <laughs>